Card controls. We all need them. We all crave them. We all want them inside of our bodies, both physically and metaphorically. Here's a life hack. Hang a black ice from your ceiling fan. Gets the ladies moist when they walk in. What else is going to get the ladies moist? Weird card controls. Let's just get right into the first one. I'm going to run through the cards like this, and I want you to do that thing you do when you see somebody approach you wearing a fedora. That's right. Say stop. So go ahead and call stop right there. Perfect. Good eye, sir. Good eye. Please remember that card, the six of diamonds. That card is going to get lost somewhere in the middle of the deck. Somewhere lost forevermore. Guess what? That card is right on top, baby. So this first control is the byproduct and the love child of Ed Marlowe. Ed Marlowe, of course, if you don't know him, then you're really, really not on top of your virginity and you need to do some more research. But Ed Marlowe gave us this wonderful, bold bluff control that could be done from a dribble. It could be done from a spread. But ultimately, it's a wonderful one because it involves a little bit of misdirection. Now, here's the thing. This is an unblinking eye of the camera. So you might have actually caught it. But in performance, especially with the right attitude and in shifting your body from over here to over here, well, guess what? You have a wonderful control that you could do that involves a little bit of bolas. So here's what you do. You're going to dribble through the cards. You're going to have them call stop anywhere they want. I'm sure you have to get used to that at some point. You're going to show them the card they call stop at. And here, the body positioning is important because you're going to start here and you're going to show the card to a couple people. But then in the actual larger motion of bringing this half over here, you're actually going to place it instead of typically in front of the half that's in your right hand, you're going to place it behind. You're going to place that bad boy behind, baby. And that's what's going to actually do the control. So at this point, usually you'd expect that card to go on the bottom and maybe you do some, some pathetic double undercut to get that card to the top of the deck. But no, this time you're placing it right on top. So you're doing this as you're transitioning your body this way. So you're going to show the card and then you're going to bring this half behind the half that is in your hand. Now at this point, you have a little bit of a smidget showing because the cards aren't completely square. Now this usually would be a little bit of a compromise, but you could turn it into a feature by telling the spectator you want them to take a look at that card every single moment until you square it up with the rest of the deck. And to them, it looks like that's just the card that was cut to, and now their card is somewhere in the middle. But really, it's right back on top. We're gonna keep that card face up for the sake of explanation. It just looks like this. The spectator calls stop. We place it over here. We square it up, and now their card is on top of the deck. I would consider that to be a little bit of a weird control, don't you think? Still works, still do it, try it. You're gonna get away with it and you're gonna feel spry. Here's a life hack with pig cake. Don't have mood lights? Just get your TV, go to YouTube and look up a 12 hour mood light compilation and you're ready to go. You don't have to go to Best Buy. You could just use what you have. I don't want anybody ever telling me that I'm not black. So here's another weird one. You're going to have a card picked and selected. In this case, we have the four of spades. That card gets lost in the middle of the deck. And we, uh, well, we lose that card somewhere deeper in the deck. And of course, we didn't lose it anywhere. That card is right on top. Where are you, dumb? You should know by now that these are all card controls, baby. Now, if you're completely lost and you don't know what's going on, you should check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy. $5 a month gets you two videos every single week going over card coin stuff. You got over 800 videos already because you get access to tutorials that I don't post anywhere else. I post exactly twice a week there, but guess what? You're getting four videos every week because I'm posting two additional tutorials. What? Check it out. $5 a month. You get access to all the videos immediately right off the bat. It's a bargain, boys. Just sign up. Go ahead. The link is going to be in the description below. Of course, I'm sponsoring myself. So this is a Paul LaPaul control. Paul LaPaul not only having the worst name in the history of history, but he gave us this very flourishy and nice control. Let's hope that we get back in focus here. Yes, we're back in business, boys. What you're going to do is you're going to have the spectator touch any card they want. Let's say they happen to touch this one the 10 of hearts, you're going to square that bad boy up and you're going to get a pinky break. Right now, my pinky is there separating both halves. Now, at this point, I could spread the cards. I could do whatever I want. But whenever I want to do the control, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get half of the cards that are above the break. So I'm going to use my dirty right thumb and use half of the cards that are above the break and just revolve them into my hand just like this. So after I revolve half those cards, I'm just simply going to use my dirty, disgusting pinky 
and that's gonna let all the cards above the break fall. And I'm just holding it between my fingers here. So right now my fingers are preventing from uh, inevitable embarrassment. Now at this point, all I'm gonna do is just drop this half back on top of here and then revolve this back on top. That's it. So at speed, what's happening is that. That's all that's happening and you get a nice flourishy way of getting that card to the top of the deck. Now if you want, you could add little variations to it. So if you want, in this case, we have the four of hearts and you want to add a little bit of a finagle to it, what you're going to do here, you're going to revolve it, you're then going to drop this, you're then going to drop this, you're then going to revolve that, you're then going to revolve that one, which is, guess what, the original top half, and then you're going to drop this bad boy on top. So now everything's revolving. It looks like a watch cycle, something I'm sure you're not familiar with as a magician, and that card is on top of the deck. So at speed, that bad boy looks like this, and you have a nice way of a flourish control to the top of the deck. Still weird. I think that uh, qualifies as a weird control. Oh yeah. Here's another life hack, boys. Your little, your little video boys. What you're gonna do is uh, you're just gonna move the camera around your little house, and uh, it's gonna give the illusion of moving around and movement. And that dynamic movement is what keeps people engaged in your videos. So in this case, I just moved it uh, a couple feet. And uh, well, I did a transition. So that way the, the video keeps moving. It keeps moving along and it looks like things are happening, but really nothing's happening. So here's a move that I'm sure you've seen done as a force, but never as a control. But here's the thing, your boy's clever, all right? Your boy's clever. I'm always coming up with things. So here's one. Spectator looks at a card, in this case, six of clubs. Look at all the cards you could have picked, sir. You could have picked all of these cards. As a matter of fact, we're gonna lose your card further in there amongst the rest of these cards. Your card is somewhere lost among there. You could have really touched any card, but guess what? Your card is right on top of the deck. This is the topsy-turvy Balducci force, essentially, but done as a control, dogs. Who would have thought that you could have used that move as a control? I did, which is why I'm showing it to you. So there's a little bit of a weird one, I would say an incomplete idea, but it's still entirely possible. You're gonna have the spectator pick a card, and here it's best if they pick a card within the top half of the deck. So when you spread the cards, you're gonna kind of do it slow, so they pick a card within the top half of the deck. Now once they look at a card, in this case, this one over here, all you're gonna do is spread these cards and turn them face upward on top of the deck as you spread through and tell them, look, look at all the options you had, sir. Now at this point, I'm gonna score these cards up and I'm just gonna do the Balducci force. I'm gonna cut deeper and flip these bad boys. Now this, again, to the spectator, just looks like you're mixing up the deck further. If you wanna find a justification for this, you're more than welcome to. But at this point, you're just gonna get that little edge and you're gonna aim it at their eyeballs. The reason you're gonna do that is because as you spread these cards, you're gonna aim that bad boy right here, this bad boy, at their eyeballs because you're gonna eventually spread right to their card and you don't want them to see that. So maybe you want them to see the first couple cards, but then when you don't want them to see that card, you're just gonna aim that buddy at their eyeballs and then you're gonna spread until you see the first face down card. Now here you get a twofer. You get not only a peak, but you get a control when you square up this half and you turn it face down in the deck. So their card is supposedly somewhere in the middle, really it's on top of the deck. So it's a weird control, but it still works and you get a peek as well because you're looking directly at what their card is. So their card is gonna be the last one here, the last one that's face up, that's gonna be their card. So you could say, look, you could have really touched any one of these cards. The moment you get to their card or the moment you start getting to where the is spreading thin because it's gonna be a couple face up cards, you're gonna aim that there, you're gonna then turn this bad boy over and now their card is somewhere in the middle of the deck. But really, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. Oh yeah? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because of the reflection on the camera, but that's a, that's a bad boy sloth. That's what gets all the ladies involved in my life. You bust out a cup like that and they go, oh my God, you're so funny because it's February and you have Christmas cups with sloths that have interesting messages on top. Here it says, take it slow this holiday. Take it slow this holiday. That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys uh, do the controls. Do the controls. Let me make sure I stay in focus here. All right. I hope you guys do everything that people do when it comes to videos. Um, I'm never going to stop posting. That's a thing that's never going to stop. So if you're looking at my channel and thinking, whoa, man, what a sinking ship. This guy's on a sinking ship. Well, ahoy ye mateys, because I ain't going anywhere. I'm going to be in the sinking ship. 
So I hope you guys are enjoying this level of content. I'm going to go figure out different ways to use uh, a, a hat. A hat. I'm going to use a hat. Yeah. Oh, boy. Again, the, the thing that every YouTube guru recommends is to make sure your content's evergreen. Don't give a specific time period so that anybody maybe, you know, four years down the line could watch this video and think, oh, okay, this video could have been shot today. This video was shot on February 1st, 2021. So um, we're about a month into 2021. Of course, if you're familiar with 2020, you would know we had a, a fun year. So now we're um, two months in there. And uh, this is what I look like, right? Who would have thought, <laughs> right? Uh, um, reminds me of that song. Right? It's that, it's that, but in physical form. Stay safe out there, boys. Stay safe out there.